Bree. Hello, I'm Carrie Arnold. I'm currently a PhD student in Dr. Neil McRoberts' lab in the plant pathology department of UC Davis. That would be the quantitative biology and epidemiology lab. I'm also co-advised by Dr. Deborah Galino, who is the director of foundation plant services at UC Davis. Today we are here to discuss Q method. Q method is a research method used in psychology and in the social sciences, sciences excuse me, to study people's subjectivity, that is their viewpoint. It was developed by William Stevenson, who achieved his PhD in physics in 1926 and a PhD in psychology in 1929. He developed an alternative form of a factor analysis, which is this, the Q method. Why use Q method? This is a way to capture the idea that people think about ideas in relation to other ideas rather than in isolation. Okay, that's kind of an interesting way to put it. But basically the results can be used to describe a population of viewpoints. This is typically used in assessing patients in cl clinical settings and examining how people think about a topic in research settings. For more info, please see Brown et al. from 1980. You can also visit the website qmethod.org, and there are a handful of other resources that will be made available to you on the website. So why did I use Qmethod? The system that I am working in, in plant pathology, is actually grapevine leaf roll associated virus type 3. This is a virus that infects grapevines and is transmitted, in other words, spread, by mealybugs and scale insects. The reason why it is of concern is that this virus by way of the mealybug, can enter a new grapevine vineyard from an old infected vineyard. And that's a concern because people invest money in new material and they are more aware of viruses today, so they are gearing towards selecting virus tested or virus screened stock, otherwise known as certified material, for new plantings. And they are concerned that the virus from an old infest infected block will then move into a new certified block. But the big question is, do growers want to actually manage leaf roll cooperatively? Because this would then imply that regional management is required in order to control leaf roll across a vast area. So now we enter into the Q method study. What I originally did with my team of Deborah and Neil, we submitted emails out to many growers and asked them to take part in work group meetings. We held three work group meetings where we submitted a survey. We allowed them to answer open-endedly to nine different questions involving leaf roll and leaf roll management, like what else about grape growing matters more than leaf roll disease? And if a leaf roll disease control program meant paying out now to achieve control in the future, how much would you be willing to pay or invest in that sort of system? Additionally, there were questions about utilizing virus-tested material and working cooperatively towards the same goal of leaf roll management. We then collated those responses. So I collected this information from the growers and they answered to the open-ended questions on a sheet of paper so that everything was anonymous. I took these responses, placed them into an Excel spreadsheet, printed out all those responses after entering them in, cut all those responses up into single or double sentence statements, and we then went through and sorted these statements based on the categories that tended to come from the statements themselves. This took about an hour, maybe two hours. After categorizing the statements, we then put them on a large sheet and started looking at each category to see which statements seemed to emulate the meaning of that category. We then selected 47 statements. 47 is not a necessary number. You can base this on how your statements come along, how many you have, and how many you want to sort later. But we devised, we decided, excuse me, that 47 statements that were apparent in this large sum of information seem to emulate the different viewpoints and subjectivities going on in the situation. 
From then on, I took those statements and placed them on cards. Each of those 47 statements is represented on one card. Then on the back of that card, I labeled a number. Just 1 to 47, the number is irrelevant. It is only so that I can take the data later on. I also made this. This is what you would call a Q-sort board. The participants who take part are the P-sort. So, I then issued emails out also again to the same participants in the work groups, but also emails out to additional growers who would like to take part in it. Vineyard managers, landowners, anyone who was wanting to be involved. We did this by way of farm advisor contacts and other grower contacts. When I came to meet with them, I basically asked them to go through the 47 cards and place them on the board based on how much it is like their point of view or how least it's like their point of view. Now as you can see, the rating goes from left to right, least to most. There is no rating up or down. The thing is here is that you can feel very strongly about two statements but be neutral about more. So in this case, six or seven. They then go through and sort and resort until they feel comfortable with how they have this, this set up and according to their perceptions and their viewpoints. Then I go through with my score sheet which looks just like the board itself, although now I can enter information about the date, the time, the grower, the organization he may be a part of. I basically go through and write down the number that the statement is associated to into the place that it correlates on the chart. I then get as many as I can. I had 37 participants in the initial study you don't have to have a lot of participants, but you should have around the amount of statements that you have. So you should have a decent amount of, of participants. Then I take this data and I put it into a table. We have the participants or the P sort and then the statements, the Q sort. You then get this sort of barcode for each statement, for, excuse me, for each participant. We can now take this matrix and enter it into a PCA, Principal Components Analysis, or a Factor Analysis. From that, we hope to accomplish something like this. This would be the output of a Principal Components Analysis. You can see the circles are participants, the arrows would be the statements, and the way that they sit in clusters represents their similarity. So if I have a cluster of participants here and a cluster of statements here, then these participants feel similar with each other based on the grouping, but then also they're typically expressing the, the viewpoints of the statements that they're clustered nearby. My analysis did not turn out that way, but it's still very representative of the people that I was interviewing highly variable. Basically 16% similarity, but 84% different. This means that these growers, vineyard managers, landowners have very different viewpoints about many different things. And I think that that actually says a lot about this region that we were in because they have a lot of different perspectives and they come from a lot of different histories. One thing that we were able to conclude, beyond the fact that they're highly variable in their viewpoints, is that when we went through and added up the scores for each of the statements, we found that only a small select amount of statements were highly rated, which is what you would find. But the interesting thing about these statements is that they all involved utilizing virus screened, virus tested, or certified stock in terms of controlling for leaf roll and other viruses. We took this information back to the growers, 
explain the situation, and this has actually led to the formation of work groups and regional management in this area. And this idea is also spreading, and there are regional management, excuse me, virus and leaf roll three regional management projects ongoing and moving down into other parts of California. And that concludes my discussion of Q method. Thank you for your time.